Our question today is how would the Holy Spirit turn this problem into an opportunity? Our starting point determines our outcome. When a problem appears, we need to be asking, what's my starting place? Too often, when a problem comes, our initial starting place is our negative emotions. We have fear, we uh, panic, we uh, are blaming this person, that situation, we're looking for a way out. Sometimes we just freeze. Our starting place is always the role of the Holy Spirit. Remember, He is the one that is with us and is teaching us all things Jesus. So He's here to teach us our starting point. And His primary starting point is always joy. Uh, read James 1, 5 to 8. Consider it all joy when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces an endurance. But let endurance have its perfect result so that you may be perfect, lacking in nothing. So his starting point in any situation is joy because joy leads to expectation. A joy that you're going to encounter an upgrade, an expectation that God is going to advance you. Remember that the goal of God is to teach you how to be like Jesus. So you're learning to respond even as Jesus would. So if your starting point is a negative, the outcome will not be in your favor. I think every situation always holds an upgrade in our experience of God and therefore our expectation of Him. Seeing our circumstances from His perspective, thinking the way that He thinks, connecting with God in a new way. I think God allows in His wisdom what He could easily prevent in His power. And He's giving us opportunities to practice what we're learning. Hey, it's not an adventure until something goes wrong. So, well, we are a kind of people that when the Holy Spirit begins to teach us joyful expectation, we begin to respond to who God is in Christ in us. Because He already knows what He wants to achieve. If joyful expectation is not your starting point, then you're going to get tossed about by your circumstances. You'll, you'll be double-minded. The mind of Christ and your old man way of thinking, they don't mix. If the Holy Spirit is talking to you about possibilities and you can only see your problems, you're going to be double-minded, and that's confusion. And God is not the author of confusion. We are. Because our lack of alignment with Him creates a disconnect. There's only one way to think about any situation, and that's the way that Jesus is thinking about it. So the Holy Spirit is here to connect us to how Jesus sees us and to how He is thinking about our circumstance. Where you see problems, He sees possibilities. Where you perceive failure, Jesus sees you practicing. When you see a lack, He sees what's missing from your experience of Him and He has every intention to provide you with that experience. So your circumstances are your classroom. So ask the Holy Spirit, what are your opportunities in this situation? When God looks at your circumstances, He already knows what He wants to be for you. So the first thing He will do is make available to you an aspect of His nature so that you can settle down. That may be to take away your anxiety by upgrading your peace. It could be by increasing your joy or releasing power to you through patience. I like patience because the enemy has none. So patience always confuses him. <laughs> That's cool. 
where there are negatives present, what are God's opposites instead? You know, what you focus on, you give power to. So for every negative in life, God always has an opposite. What's the opposite of fear? Perfect love. The opposite of frustration? That would be patience. Focus on what God has for you instead. And that displaces all the negatives. Don't try to work on a negative. Think of the opposite and move towards it. What is the potential victory that's at hand right now in your circumstances? 1 Corinthians 15, 57 says, He always gives us the victory in Christ. Here's the cool thing about that. It means you're not fighting for victory, you're fighting from victory. There is a breakthrough present in your circumstance. And a victory has been assigned to you. I love this story in 2 Kings chapter 6, 8 to 23. It's the story of Elisha and his servant. And the background to the story is that <clears throat> he's been getting words of knowledge about uh, what the Aramean king is wanting to do against Israel. And so he's warning Israel at every opportunity. And so the king calls a, a meeting of all his counselors, and he's saying, so how is it that they always know where we're going to be? And one of the guys says, it's because they have a prophet who, tell, who, who hears from God and tells them what we are doing. So the king sends out an army. Uh, they find out where Elisha is staying. He sends this army to annihilate him. And so we pick the story up on a morning when the servant gets up and, you know, his job is probably to make Elisha coffee and fetch the newspaper, whatever. And he sees this army surrounding this town where they are living. And he knows instantly they're here to kill Elisha. So he goes and wakes it up and uh, uh, Elisha up and the servant is panicking, he's fearful, he's worried. He takes Elisha up to the rooftop. They see the army circling and uh, the servant is effectively saying, that's it, we're dead, no one can help us. And Elisha turns and says, Lord, open his eyes. He lays hands on his servant and says, Lord, Hope, open his eyes that he can see what you see. When the servant's eyes are opened, he sees horses and chariots of fire on the surrounding hillsides. And Elisha makes the comment to him, see, there are more with us than there are with them. This is the story of two guys. They're both in the same situation but one of them has a relationship with God that enables him to see things that can't be seen with the natural eye. And when he prays for his servant, his eyes are opened spiritually to connect with the situation the way that God is. And of course, the story then goes that Elisha goes walking out and he says, Lord, make their eyes blind. So he goes out and he says, who are you looking for? And they don't recognize him. They've probably all got laminated photographs in their back pocket. But none of them recognize him. And he ends up taking them on a 40-mile hike to where the king of Israel is waiting with his army. And the Israeli king said, oh, shall we kill them? Shall we kill them? And Elisha said, nah, they're done. I stuck a fork in. They're finished. Just feed them and let them go home. And here's the end of that story. It says the marauding band of Arameans, they never came back into that territory. Two guys, same situation, one seeing an elevated vision, one seeing what's going on in the natural. You see, it's the Holy Spirit that makes those connections for us. He shows us our opportunities in what to practice. He illuminates to us what God is doing instead. He reveals the victory that is assigned to us. I want you to think about that right now. Your current situation has a victory assigned to you. 
So when a problem arises, you, you can be joyful because you know that God is at work already. So what's the activation in all of this? <clears throat> Here's the thing. What's your most recent problem? What was your starting point? Was it negative? Was it positive? Did you rejoice? Did you give thanks? Or did you panic and get fearful? What was your initial expectation? Something's going wrong. Did you expound on that? Or did you actually get a sense of God is with me in this? Partner with the Holy Spirit for a new starting point right now. Take a piece of paper, fold it in half. On one side, make a list of all the negatives that you see. And on the other side, find a God opposite for each of them. Tear that paper in half. Throw the negative side away because you don't need that anymore. Focus on the second list. Read through it again and again. And ask, what promises are here for me? What opportunities for practicing your learning? How is God showing up and who does he want to be for me now? And then read those things, read it aloud daily. Holy Spirit, thank you that I have this new starting place. Thank you that this is what you want to be for me. Thank you that this is the victory you're assigning to me. Thank you that this is my learning. This is who I get to become. Thank you that I have a new starting place for this situation. So I want to engage with you fully in the name of Jesus. Thanks for listening. I appreciate it. We'll see you next week.